have been bullied enough in my DMs. Today I finally have my review of the new Hourglass Vanish Airbrush Pressed Powder. I wanted to wear it yesterday to have a little bit more experience with it before I filmed the actual review, but it's here. I'm telling you, now why is this powder a big deal? It's because Hourglass only has one other like translucent setting powder. It's in a loose form and it's amazing. And as you might know if you watch me, Hourglass has my all-time favorite face powders from bronzer to blush to finishing powder. So what can they do with this mattifying pressed powder is it going to be on par with the rest of their powders so you can get this for $54 it is also an arm and a leg for a setting powder so she better do wonders for our skin right unfortunately at Sephora three of the five shades are sold out it's the lighter shades but if you have a deeper complexion the two deepest shades are still available if you want to get that discount now if you have your eye on it i do have a personal discount that i can give you for the hourglass website it's not as much as 20 percent but you can pick these up on the hourglass website they have all the shades available make sure you check your emails i know i received a 20 percent off coupon in my email for ulta have these come to ulta Mm. At least at the time that I'm filming this, it doesn't look like this powder has come to Ulta. So if you want a little bit of a discount and your shade is sold out, you can use my discount code for the Hourglass website. Anyways, let's get into the details about this powder. What is it all about? There are five different shades available. I picked up two different ones. I picked up one of the translucent and then one of the translucent light. So it looks like they have a little bit of tint. Let's see, the product itself is made in Korea. It has a 12 month shelf life and here's how they describe it. It's a talc free sheer pressed powder. So it's going to be sheer. Jose is just blasting his music out in the hallway outside my door. <laughs> what? <laughs> you me. Um, okay, sheer pressed powder. It's supposed to instantly reduce shine for an airbrushed finish that lasts all day. Weightless, shine controlling, perfect and touch up, absorbs excess oil, blurring the appearance of pores. That's a big one for me. I like it when a powder can blur my, blur my pores. Okay, let's do it. Let's get it on the face. So the packaging of the powder looks like this. It's the classic hourglass packaging, but just thinner, I have to say. And let me show you the two shades I got. So it does come with a little puff that I'm going to demo today right here for touch-ups on the go. So I have translucent here and then translucent light here. Translucent light has more of a pinky undertone. So if you're fair with a cool undertone, translucent light is a good option. I'm going to show you on my fingers. Translucent. It feels pretty buttery smooth. Like I said, I used this yesterday. So I am coming in with a little bit of an opinion, but I do want to test it a couple other ways before I fully decide. Translucent, translucent light, translucent, translucent light. So the translucent light definitely has a little bit more brightness to it compared to the translucent, but you should be able to just blend them in. Okay, I'm not going to wear the powder like this today because it's a sheer powder. I want to see how it holds other makeup. But I did want to demo it on a bare face so that you can see how the powders look. I'm going to go in with translucent light. I do have some breakouts here on this side of my face. You guys, I think it was the Drunk Elephant moisturizer that I used. It was just too thick on my skin and it broke me out. I'm going to use the puff that it comes with. Here's what it looks like. Let's see how this looks on bare skin. So translucent light again. We have it packed on pretty well. So when you would use this is, you know, if you will have an oily skin type and you just want to control oil throughout the day, that's when you would use it like this because it doesn't really provide any extra coverage. I hadn't tested it like this yesterday, so I wanted to show you how this looks on bare skin. This translucent light, it looks pretty translucent on my skin. Let me see if truly translucent is truly translucent here. If I'm being honest, I'm not really noticing on bare skin a difference between translucent light 
and translucent, but I do have dry skin, so this is not my preferred method of using this powder, but you'll see there is little to no coverage with this. It is truly a sheer product, and it is great to use this powder like this if you are going for no makeup for the day, but you want to control oil for all of my oily girls, but just so I could show you the coverage, AKA, there is none. So let me do my face now. went all cream bronzer and blush today so we can truly see how this powder holds up so I'm gonna set my under eyes how I normally set them with a powder puff from Amazon I prefer the shape over what they give so this is translucent okay come nice and close Let's turn the lights down you can get a real good look of what we're doing here and we're gonna press on the under eyes so you can see how this sits and then I like to blur the pores right here and then get the t-zone I'm gonna do translucent light on the under other side so you can see if you need to pick up both shades so here's how it's looking it definitely blurred the face now the big question, is it as blurring as like the Pat McGrath or the Huda Beauty? No. If you're going for a pure blur, Huda Beauty and Pat McGrath have more of a blurring powder. But that doesn't mean that this doesn't blur. I have to admit, I was hoping it would be a little bit more blurring. So it didn't tick that box for me. But this is how I normally set my face. I do like to pack it on in the T-zone area. So that's what I'm going to do today. I'm also going to take it again, my sponge. And you can see that you can get a little bit of some shape there. So there is enough pigment buildup to where you can shape the face. Okay, on the other eye, I'm gonna show you with translucent light. I will build it up to how I have it on this side of the face, but I wanna show you with a refer brush. So translucent light, going to lightly set the under eye, the forehead, right here, and right here. So it's definitely lighter on this side color-wise. I do feel like there is a little bit more brightening. I can see the pinkier tone. Now with the brush application, it's not as blurring. I find it to look a little bit drier on this side with the lighter layer of powder. I'm somebody where my skin can handle baking. In fact, I think it helps my skin. But this still looks pretty and it does have a soft effect on the face if you were to just apply it with a brush. But for true testing purposes to keep the size even how I normally would apply it, I'm going to pack on with my sponge and it definitely gave more brightness than the translucent side. So that's really good. I didn't do a side-by-side -side yesterday, so I was hoping that this side would have a little bit more impact. So if you want more impact pigment-wise, definitely pack it on with a sponge or the sponge that they give. The sponge that they give is a little bit too stiff for my preferences. I just like my Amazon ones, but you can definitely see the brightness compared to this side. My face is completely flat. This is matte. Now do keep in mind I do have a dry skin type and it looks a little dry on my skin right now. However, I do believe as the day goes on and my natural oils come in and the product settles, I don't think it's going to look dry anymore. But just because I'm in front of two giant studio lights right now, I am seeing a little bit of dryness but nothing bad. And this is not part of the review, but I did recently test a bunch of new stuff from Sephora, but it's difficult because so many shiny cheek products came out. I do want to see what the Demi Glow from Fenty Beauty Pretty Pearls looks like, because my face is so flat 
with the Hourglass. So I'm going to use this from Fenty in a Rare Beauty highlight brush. I want to see how this sits on the skin. This is, will be the only powder product that I have on my face other than the Hourglass powder. And that is what will give the glow today. It's not the powder. You see that the powder is completely mattifying. It's very pretty. This is definitely more glowy than I thought it was going to be. You know, with the name Demi Glow, I thought it would be, I don't know, a little bit more natural. But this does give a lot of glow. It's honestly quite gorgeous for a flat face like today. I'm going to put just a little bit more on. I don't want to apply any more blush or bronzer because I really want to see how this powder holds. Let me finish the rest of my makeup. Full beat, here's how we're looking. I didn't put anything on the lower lash line so we can really see how it set the concealer. Overall, keep in mind I did wear this yesterday and it it's looking so far pretty consistent with yesterday. I think the powder itself, it sits beautifully on the skin. This is not going to be my go-to for under eye powder. It looks a little bit dry on my under eyes. I'm gonna stick with my Pat McGrath Huda Beauty Givenchy. Those are just the most blurring, the most lightweight on the under eyes. This one can do under the eyes. It's not bad at all, but there is better out there. But in terms of setting the face, I think it does a real nice job of adding a little bit of shade where you need. And overall, it does give quite the airbrushed appearance. Now, I do have drier skin, and I would look at it up close in the studio lights, and I'm like, it is a hint dry on me, but I truly feel like as I go about my day, it's going to soak in and look really beautiful and airbrushed. I'm going to show you right now an overlay of my phone. Now keep in mind, the phone definitely shows things that aren't really visible in person, but I want you to see it from a different lens and it still looks really nice. In person, it looks really nice. Just a tad dry if you are dry. It's good to hydrate before. It's always good to shave the face if you have baby hairs because this is sticking to my baby hairs. It doesn't bother me that much, but it's just something that I'm noticing. Front camera in front of the window. Oh my God. I will say the Fenty highlight is popping. My skin looks really, really nice. Hmm, I can't wait for this to settle in. I think as of now, early on in the day, after having used it yesterday, this powder is expensive for what it is. It's not the most game-changing powder, but I do feel like it definitely touches on all of the claims. It does everything that it claims, so I can't complain about that. And my skin from a distance all over is looking nice and airbrushed. It's just the under eyes that I don't love it as much, but for the rest of the face, setting makeup, it looks really nice. Especially, I feel like if you have oily skin, it's going to hold off those oils really well. But we'll see as the day goes on. So far, I like it. I don't love it. I think it's a bit expensive for what it is. But we'll see. If I look like this at the end of the day, I'm definitely going to change my mind. All right, we have made it to the halfway checkpoint. And here is how it's looking. So I can tell you right now that my favorite under eye powders would have held up better than this. And I made sure I used base products that I was really familiar with. But my face makeup has the oil controlled quite well. It doesn't look so great right in this area. And I am going to attribute that to the powder not holding up as well. But I will say, when I look in the camera, it honestly doesn't look <laughs> like this in person. When I was out in the car in the sunlight, my skin looked so smooth and pretty. The powder has definitely settled in. I feel like the powder looks just better IRL. No, I'm still liking it. I'm sticking by like it's a good powder, but it's not a groundbreaking powder. But I will catch you guys at the end of the day on the HD camera. How dedicated I remain to this review, you ask? Well, to be honest, today in Maryland, it was a cool day. I have dry skin. I had no oils coming through today whatsoever. This test would have been much more successful in Miami. So what do I do for you guys? I hopped on the treadmill, wearing jeans, a normal bra, full beat, hair down, 
so I could test this for the oily and sweaty girls. <laughs> oh, dedication. So I did just that, and I am ready to give you my full day wear test results. So this is post very slow jog. Okay, minimal sweating. However, I sh she does have its upper sweaty lip. The makeup is coming off a little bit, but that that could very well be the foundation. All things considered, for being a little sweaty, the powder I felt like has done a good job of reducing the sweat on my face. Now I didn't do anything crazy, but I did just enough to challenge the makeup a little bit. The upper lip is gone. She's crusty. She has a crusty upper lip right now. But that leaves room, it does, it leaves room to try a touch-up, which they do recommend this product for touch-up. So we're going to take some of, let's just do regular translucent. We're going to dab her and see. She's revived. That helped. I mean, it's a little bit of a powder over crust look but it looks better this is not too heavy for a touch-up honestly nice on the touch-up front let's see are we looking good as new not quite good as new but it definitely only looks like it's been a couple hours at this point after touch-up maybe let's try the under eyes see if we can refresh the under eyes with this powder just gonna use a clean blending brush gonna blend out the under eyes and this by the way is a tip for anybody if your under eyes are looking crusty take a blending brush that's clean and kind of swipe under there take a little bit more powder at this point I'm just going to use translucent on both eyes definitely refreshed I would say not renewed but absolutely refresh okay after doing full two day wear tests of this product. I've hinted along the way my overall thoughts of this, but overall she's a good powder. She looks so nice like in the daytime. However, when I do look really close to a mirror in front of professional lights, this isn't best suited for dry skin. You can make it work, absolutely. Like it still looked great on my skin today, especially like I said, when I was out in the car, my skin did really look porcelain smooth it looks nice not my number one under eye setting powder i think for the best look i use huda beauty or something like that on the under eyes and then i use this kind of to set the rest of the face and it just gives a smooth perfected look it is not a makeup list look okay especially on my dry skin it will look a little bit like powder, but as the day goes on, it doesn't look bad at all. I actually think if you have oily skin that this is great. It did a nice job with my sweatiness. However, I don't have oily skin. So if you have oily skin and you tried this, let me know how it works. Overall thoughts though, if you came out to me IRL and you were like, Morgan, what are your thoughts on the airbrush powder? I would say it's a nice powder. It is a bit overpriced. I would buy it on sale better suited towards oily skin has a nice finish overall but you know she's kind of expensive i wouldn't spend my last penny on this powder so take that review as you will i hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful let me know your thoughts down below on this powder seriously share your skin type share your skin tone if you would like if you got a different color powder and let us know how you felt that worked against your skin and let us know how it worked because for me here is hating it, here is absolutely loving it. I would say I'm like, like right here, you know? So that does it for today's review. As always, I am going to feature this powder in an upcoming speed review. It's probably a new at Sephora speed reviews is where you will see my final thoughts in it as I continue testing it. Though I will say, I'm pretty good at not changing my mind up too much, but I will be honest if I messed up, but I'm pretty sure I'm set in stone considering this is a second wear test. So, yeah. I'll see y'all in the next one. Have a good one.